first of all, really want to thank all of you for being here tonight. I want to thank Rabbi Cantor for all the incredible work you've done on the HPCT CAE at Home program for the holidays. Thank the Temple Office for all their incredible work. Thank all the volunteers, but most importantly, thank all Temple members for your participation, your commitment. And amazingly, you heard the call for helping us financially. As you know, we did not charge for tickets this year because we didn't have tickets for seats, but we asked people to fill the gap. And I can tell you, we actually raised more money this year for the holidays than we did last year without tickets. It's all due to your generosity. So thank you for that. Two other points. One, community, as I mentioned in the video, we learned that this has been a difficult six months, but it was less difficult because we were all there for each other in many different ways. We do care about each other. We miss each other, but we've certainly supported each other throughout this en entire period. And we know things will get better and we'll get back together. And finally, just best wishes to everybody for a sweet, good, healthy, and virus-free new year. And I hope to see many of you at the services we're having inside and outside. So best wishes, happy, healthy new year. Thank you so much, much Stuart. Thank you. And again, thank everyone for your support, for your support of the project. And it, it's really the, the overwhelming response that uh, we have gotten has been very, very heartening for me. I know that uh, many, many people had words to, to, for me for uh, the manual and the moderate. There's so much material in there. I urge you to look at it, to examine it, to read it, study things, disagree with it, argue with me about it. I, I, I look forward to that. That's, that's what it's all about. I get, well, not the argument, but, but the conversation, the story that goes on. I want to turn to the Chazan now. We'll have a, 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 a tune. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it to you, Dealer's Choice. Or Baruch Shoshana Biros, Shoshana, Ikatevun, Ubiom Tom Kippur, Ubiom Tom Kippur, Yehatevun, Berosh Hashana, Ikatevun, Ubiom Tom Kippur, Ubiom Tom Kippur, and let's go, Zochreino Lechayim. Zochreino Lechayim, Melech Hafez Bachayim, Chodeinu Besefer Achayim, Lemancha, Lemancha, Elohim Chayim. Okay, I have to compress a few messages into a very short time. So here we go. One, this is something that, that just occurred to uh, me from my Parsha talk, which we do every week. On, and this is a commercial for the Parsha talk. If you haven't been watching it, uh, you can uh, turn on to it every Friday. We have a great uh, program. My buddies, Rabbi Kalmanowski and Chesler. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, you know, build this viewership up and give valuable prizes to people <laughs> over the year. Anyway, last, yesterday we, we, we recorded it and uh, my colleague Rabbi Kalmanovsky said something very else. We were talking, very something fascinating. We were talking about Unatana Tokev, one of the most complicated prayers, very difficult prayer, who will live, who will die. And, and um, you know, my reaction to that is, I said, you know, we enter a world in which, you know, we are, we are, viewing our accountability as something that is, that is right in front of us. And, um, you know, Rabbi Chester mentioned that, that we're, we're engaging with the transcendent. Rabbi Kamanovsky mentioned that the purpose of these prayers is to really hit us hard. And um, it's to open us up. 
that it's not necessarily what the prayer means as much as what the prayer does to us. And I want to share that idea with you. It's the, the purpose is to, to really open us up, to make us pour out our hearts. I often say that when you open and close the ark, it's, it's not about, you know, standing and sitting and giving honors. It's about a metaphor for being open and closed. Like Yehuda Amichai, a great Israeli poet, you know, patuach sagur patuach, you know, open, close, open, he writes. We have to learn from that. We have to incorporate the, the idea that, that, that you can, when you open yourself up, your heart pours out. And when the heart is full, it, it often shows in, in so many ways and so many different emotions. And I think that, that this is especially true this year because we're all going to feel something so different this year. And one of the things I hope we feel is that sense of openness. When the heart is open, everything can pour out of it. The prayers do that for us on a regular Rosh Hashanah. But this year, we're already predisposed to being open. We've, we've seen vulnerability. We've seen a lot of difficulty. We've seen a lot of challenge in the world. And this makes this moment open for us so that our heart can pour out. And it makes us open for gladness also. And that's my second theme. My second theme, in addition to the prayers, make us open. The prayers, the second thing I want to talk to you about is joy. The, the psalm, I think we'd like to sing, is, you know, in, in times of trouble, is, S-I-N-I-L-A-H-A-R-I-M-A-I-N-Y-V-O-I-S-R-I. I I look to the mountain, where will my help come from? And um, I'm thinking that we have to ask a different kind of question this year. And the, the, the question is not, oh, where am I going to get help? It's, where do we get joy from? Where do we get joy? Me'ayin yavo simchati, instead of me'ayin yavo ezri. Me'ayin yavo simchati. Where do I get a joy from? So I have a few things that I want to propose to you. You get joy, as we all have learned over these last six months, you get joy from the little pleasures of life. The little pleasures of life are really joyful. And I'm talking about a blueberry muffin, a cup of coffee, a fresh piece of challah, apples and honey. I'm talking about even something as mundane as going to the store, which many of us cannot do. And there is a little bit of joy even in going to a store, going, reading a book, or as my late uncle used to say, say, a nice pair of shoes, a good mattress, a good set of tires. These are things that give you joy. The little pleasures in life are, are, are really joyful. Two, the big pleasures of life. The big pleasures of life are family, friends, grace of love, partnership. The things that you can't measure, those are big. Uh, I, I know that every single person here today has been in contact with people that are close to each other, close to us. For many, that's, you know, parents, for many that's children, for many that's siblings, for many that's other relatives and friends. We've been dialing up everybody and wishing good yantif to everybody and texting good yantif to everybody. And you know, that symbolizes that the big joys of our lives come from the people that we are engaged with, the people that we embrace and the people that give us joy by the mystery if it's children or grandchildren or even great-grandchildren. I know that, that that joy is immeasurable. So little pleasures, big pleasures. Three, this is a theme that I've been thinking about all this month and, and before, which is, you know what gives us joy, especially on this holiday? Melody, music. We talked about that also in the Parsha talk, but, but those of you who have been with me over the last six weeks on these classes, I've talked a lot about music. I'm not a musicologist, but I can tell you just the things that I feel when I, recite this music, right? Right, it's all, it's minor, but then it goes major. It, it's all about the change in moods and the blending of the awe and the joy of this. And music gives us great joy. Music encodes the information. This holiday, more than any other of the Jewish holidays, is the musical holiday. It's the Chazan's holiday. It's not the rabbi's holiday. Shavuos is the rabbi's holiday. But the Chazan's holiday, is, is uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, okay? And music gives us joy. Music gives us joy. So I urge you over the next couple of days when we're not together, 
open the manual up and, and follow my instructions and listen to yourself. Remind yourself of the music that Rosh Hashanah, Avinu Malkeinu, Zochreinu, Sefer Chaim, all the things that you really know you know. Four, community. Community gives us joy. I got the little pleasures, a cup of coffee, the big pleasures, family, the mellow music, community. Community gives us joy, knowing that we're not alone. Where's my book? I, have, I just bought Sharansky's new book. You are not alone. You are not alone. Anyone could teach us that as Sharansky. That is, we live in a community. The Jewish people is a community. The Jewish people, we are our community, our micro community, our bigger communities, and we are the, the larger community. And that's the fourth thing that, that gives us joy, knowing that we're not alone, knowing that tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, we are going to be sitting in our little sanctuaries in our home, and we're gonna, and we're gonna be davening. We're gonna be davening apart, but we're going to be doing it all together. Fifth, I get joy out of the fact that I belong to the people of Israel, Klal Yisrael. Wherever I go in the world, wherever I am, I know that I am with a community of Israel, the big family, and that family has its history. And that is number seven, the joy of Torah. You, if you've watched us, people have remarked to me, oh, Rabbi, I never see you so happy. Uh, I guess I, I must be such a, whatever. I, I think that, <laughs> that people see us engaged. We get into these really big discussions and, and it's, it's pure joy, pure joy. We've said, the three of us have said, you know, this is the, the best thing that's happened to us over the pandemic is that we've had a chance to be our, ourselves and to have these discussions and to study. And it's because it's joyful to, to be a part of the story of the people of Israel is joy. I think ritual, halacha, is joyful. I, I think sitting down to the meal tonight, making the kiddush, washing your hands, having the motzi, dipping your apples in honey, dipping the chal in honey, Go through the, 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 the manual. I have a beautiful Seder for you. There's tremendous rituals in the Seder. Look, I have here my plate, my special plate for all of the different symbols, okay? You think that there's only such a thing as a Pesach plate. I see that. Okay? There, you have rituals, and rituals give us joy because rituals frame our experiences and take what cannot be condensed and make it into something palatable. Nine, peace gives us joy. Absolutely, peace. And this week we saw an example of it, and we have to remark on the fact, and let's not take it uh, in, a, in a small way. This is a huge moment, the, the peace between Israel and Bahrain, the peace between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, and the peace that is opening up in the, between Israel and the Arab world. That's a very big thing. Israel gives us joy. The state of Israel gives us joy, knowing that the Jewish people is charting its destiny on its own and emerged from powerlessness. That is joyful. That, for many of us, is something that we are so intrinsically connected to. It's part of our lives in ways that we cannot even explain. And that gives us tremendous joy. Finally, the last thing that gives us joy is gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude to God. Gratitude is what is the engine of joy. You know, every Friday night we've started these services with Lachuna Ranana, which is let's be joy, let's sing, let's sing. But when the holiday coincides with Shabbat, you start with is more Shirli Oma Shabbat, the psalm for Shabbat. The psalm for Shabbat begins with Tov Leodot Ladonai. It's good to thank God. And so there's a message encoded in that. Every other week, you are joyful. This week, be thankful. That's the key to joy. So, the little pleasures, the big pleasures, music, community, Klal Yisrael, Medinat Yisrael, Torah Yisrael, ritual, peace, and gratitude. That is my second message. Wishay Shechianu, don't be depressed. I forbid anyone here to be sad. You are not allowed to be sad. I've heard so many messages this week from leaders of our movement. They're so depressed. Do not succumb to sadness. Be joyful, be thankful, say the Shekhiano. Yes, it's, it will choke up because we're, we're joyous. We've reached this day. 
שהחיינו וקיימנו והגיענו לזמן הזה. My third message. It's a favorite message. You may have heard me tell it before. So we couldn't be together in person. So I'm going to sit in my living room sanctuary and be with everybody in my imagination. Everyone doing the same thing, hopefully, at the same time, in whatever way they choose, and I honor and respect all of that. And we're going to have beautiful meals, and we're going to look at Torah and my commentaries, and everybody's commentaries, and ask important questions. But here's what I want to say. When you don't have the normal way to celebrate, you find another way. That's all. Judaism is about looking at the world and looking at life, and when a door becomes close to you, you find another door. That's it. When this became known to me back in May, I knew this back in May, that we would not be together, I began to say, there is another way to do Rosh Hashanah. It's obvious. Let's find another way. And we chose another way. We chose the harder way, and I think we will all be better for that. When you don't have your normal way to celebrate, choose another way. When you don't have another, a normal way to learn, you choose another way. When you don't have a, a normal way to congregate, you choose another way. And this is always the Jewish response. And this is in the machzor. There's a key moment in the machzor which says, Ochila la'el. I pray to, I turn to you, God. I yearn for you. And what is it about? It's a prayer about prayer. And I've always said when we get to this prayer, it's what happens if you don't know how to pray or if you don't like to pray or if you don't find uh, joy in prayer or you don't find any meaning in prayer. So what do you pray for when you find no meaning in prayer? You know what you pray for? You pray for the ability to pray. That's what you pray for. You pray for the ability to pray. Just like in the normal, if there's no normal, you find a normal. If, you, if there's no way to celebrate, you find a new way to celebrate. If there's no way to pray, you find a new way to, if you don't get meaning from it, you find a way to be meaningful. You pray for the sake of prayer, for the ability to pray. And that's what I'm thinking about. I think also, on, you know, for many people, especially people going through difficult, difficult challenges, and we all have, and we all will. I often like to quote Rabbi Mori Slam, who says about going through difficult things, and what do you hope for when everything is hopeless? He says, you hope for the ability to hope, which is like saying you pray for the ability to pray. And once you realize that you can hope for the ability to hope, and you can pray for the ability to pray, or you can find a way when all other ways are closed to you to celebrate, to congregate, to learn, then all of a sudden there's possibilities. There are new possibilities. And all of a sudden there's the possibility of joy. And that's what I want to say to everyone tonight, which is we're entering these days. Do not be sad. Do not be depressed. There is tremendous joy. There's tremendous wisdom. There's tremendous gratitude. And there's tremendous hope. Study it. I've written about these things in the manual. I want you to look at it. I want you to look at the commentaries. I want you to enjoy each other. Enjoy alone. Enjoy meditation. Enjoy the tradition. Enjoy the yantav. And we all should be together soon. Not okay. okay. So we'll end up with a little song. We got something. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>
So we reached the end of our time together. I want to remind everyone the candle lighting is 642 and that uh, we will have the in-person at 630 for those registered and uh, the times I uh, announced also, you can check your emails for that. We'll be online tomorrow night for, uh, I'm sorry, Sunday night for Abdallah, I believe at 7.30, right, 7.30. And so there we will have a, a, a chance to just wish everyone, I'm just gonna mute everyone. You wanna just say good, good yantiv, Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Paul and Aaron. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. Thank you, Rabbi. Shana Tova. Thank you, Rabbi. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Lynn. And yeah. Oh, that's uh, where? Okay. okay. I'm gonna leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Bye bye, we got off the couch. Oh, that's uh, for you. <laughs> Facing east. <laughs> Have a sweet yanta for safe being safe. I want to call. Good yanta. 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 Good yan